1994, I saw an ad in the Blade for a gong show at the Hippo in Baltimore. Now, the gong show that I remembered was a talent competition where uh, they had celebrity judges and they had this big gong and they would use it only on the worst acts. And then they would judge and they'd pick a winner in the end. The Hippo was a gay bar. And Baltimore, well, that's a city to the north with lower expectations. <laughs> this was my shot. I mean, my whole life people told me, you're so funny, you should try stand-up comedy. So I was going for it. I had, had already been on stage twice. Uh, once at a lesbian open mic between two Indigo Girls cover songs. <laughs> and the other time at a real comedy club downtown with about 10 people in the room. Six of which were the other comedians waiting for their shot. So I paid my dues. It was on a Friday and uh, I had to get out of work early to get ready and make the drive. I put on my Doc Martens, my best jeans, and I rolled up the sleeves on my party jacket. I thought it was so cool. I think I got it at Commando Salamander. And it was red checkered and oversized. And I looked in the mirror and I smiled. I looked the part, very Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> I got there early like they told me to and I went backstage. And it was full of all these drag queens running around in various levels of clothing. And they were laughing and they all knew each other. And I felt left out. And I started to get that feeling that I had when I was a kid and I tried out for the local theater. The feeling that made me quit. And I pushed it down. I was going to be this uh, third act. There were two acts before me. So this guy took me to the green room to wait by myself. <laughs> the green room. <laughs> this is cool. I was going over my jokes when he came to take me to the stage. So I'm lingering behind the curtain while the act before me, this beautiful Latina drag queen finishes her song and she gets thundering applause from the audience and all nines from the judges. And then I hear my name and bam, I'm on stage. The lights are bright and I can't see anything but I can tell that the room is full. I go into my first joke. I was really nervous about coming here tonight. I was afraid that the judges and as soon as I said judges, the crowd started to laugh. And I didn't know what was going on. So I look over my shoulder, and there on the stage behind me under a spotlight are the judges. It's Elvis and two drag queens dressed in ice skating outfits. One of them has a, a bandage on her leg, and the other one has a billy club. And I knew right away who it was. The Olympics were just over, so this scandal was everywhere. It was Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan, and they were fighting. <laughs> they kept fighting. <laughs> Finally, I didn't know what to do. Uh, as soon as they settled down, I turned back to the audience. But my punchline didn't make sense anymore. I was going to say something stupid about worrying that the judges were from the 1980s television show, but clearly I had more to worry about. So I went into my next joke. It was about uh, the, the new ban on smoking in military facilities. <laughs> yeah, it, you had to be there, it was timely. <laughs> really good one, but it, before I could get it out, I hear, let's talk about that jacket, honey. And Tanya comes up to me to interview me in the middle of my set. She's asking me questions and I can't think of one funny thing to say and I'm lost and she, she makes fun of my shoes and then she starts to make fun of my jacket and Nancy screams out, stop bothering the sad lesbian clown. <laughs> and she retreats. So now I'm standing there and my mind is blank. I can't think of one thing to say. I mean, I had practiced in order. <laughs> I had one joke already in my set about Tanya and Nancy and what it would be like if they were lesbians, but I did not want to provoke them. <laughs> what should I do, what should I do? Uh, the one about cunnilingus with a Safeway bag for protection? <laughs> no, they would tear that one up. So I'm standing there and I'm blinking in silence and there's this uncomfortable feeling starting to stir in the crowd. And it was growing with every second of my silence until I heard another sound. And Tanya yells out, oh, she's been gonged. And Nancy deadpans, let's hear it for the sad lesbian clown. So from the bright lights and the heat of the stage to the pitch dark of the backstage and the cold air of the winter night and the long drive back on the BW Parkway. The thing is, Olympic skating team or not, I sucked. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I was bombing. But then again, I had mistakenly entered a drag competition. <laughs> so not only was I the only non-drag performer, I was the only person wearing pants. <laughs> Unless you count Elvis, but I don't know if a white jumpsuit counts as pants. <laughs> I never did stand up again. Hey, but while you were getting your drinks tonight, I was waiting in the green room. <laughs> <laughs>